Hello and welcome to another reading vlog for this week. So I have already read a book. I may as well tell you about it. The first book that I have already devoured. Sorry, I just have to adjust my tartars. Uh, that I've already devoured this week is Never Lie to Me by Frieda McFadden. So I just wanted something a bit spicy and I went to a thriller. Thrillers are hit and miss for me. Sometimes I love them. Sometimes they make me feel gross and yucky. This one... I was leaning towards the yucky side. So I did give it a three. So it's still a decent rating. Uh, so this one I listened to on audiobook as well. So that I decided to go for a walk. And I popped this on. In this book, you have a woman and her fiance who are going to see a house and they're getting bad vibes. And it's going back and forth in time to the previous owner of the house who was a psychologist and was having issues with one of her clients. So straight out the gate, I was getting unreliable narrator vibes. I was predicting what was happening. I think once you read a lot of thrillers, you start to sometimes see the threads and you're just like, oh, I know the tropes. I know how this is gonna go. This was kind of one of those cases, but it did end up going a bit over the top for me. That's what brought its rating down. The writing was just a bit too bonkers, a bit too silly. With the murderers and sociopaths, I don't love being in their head, in their point of view. Um, so for me, I like cozy, I think I like cozy murder mysteries, murder mysteries, more than thrillers. I don't like anything that has body horror and I don't like being in the head of a murderer while like they're killing their victim or things like that. Like nothing too dark for me. In the beginning, I found both of the female characters in this to be really annoying <laughs> and stupid. <laughs> I found them a bit idiotic. So that's why it's, it's a three. I think a lot of people would really like this book. I can see why people would eat this kind of stuff up. But yeah, just for me, it wasn't, it wasn't super duper what I was hoping it would be. And I've also read Starlings. So Starlings got me because of the cover. I don't know, something about the blues and the flowers. It just caught my attention. It's a new book. I would call this a YA paranormal horror. Yeah, more than fantasy, so to speak. So in this book, so you've got an MC who's by, who's with her mother. Their father has died and they're going back to a town to meet their, her late dad's mother, her grandmother, for the first time. So her father cut the grandmother off and she's never been in the granddaughter's life. So they go to this town and there's just something weird going on straight away. Both of them start feeling ill, the mother gets headaches, everyone in the town like reveres this grandmother. Their surname is Starling and they're like, oh, Miss Starling, Miss Starling. The Starlings are famous, you know, in this town and it's sort of like, why? What are they, what are they famous for? You know, there's just constant foreshadowing going on from the get-go. It's one of those books where you just get frustrated at the MC for the choices they're making with the shit that's going on. You're like, woman, wake up. Like, why would, you know, like, do something. So it's one of those situations. Uh, you have multiple love interests. And I say love interests, like, I didn't like either of these things. They felt very, both of them felt very insta-lovey immediately out the gate. Uh, you've got people who are not as they seem, obviously. You've got secrets and lies. There is a, a fantasy element in the, that there's like creatures that have magic and that prey upon people, it's sort of like demon-like entities. I don't know, it was it was okay, but like I said, it wasn't clever. Things just got wrapped up so hella quick. You know, it's just like, oh, that's convenient. That was a very easy fix that didn't rely on any sort of intricacy or plot work. You know what I mean? Just like, I'm just gonna do this. Oh, look, it worked. <laughs> like, what? So yeah, I didn't love that. Flowers play a big part in this. Roses are a big theme in this. It, but it was fine. Like it was readable. Like you just wanted to read it and finish it and see how it ended. You know, it's one of those books. It's a popcorn book. It's got nothing really of substance, but you know, it, it hits the spot. So it's okay. It was a bit more definitely on the younger side with the YA element. So a bit more juvenile, even though she's supposed to be, I think she's supposed to be 18. Um, yeah, I gave it 3.25. It was okay. You know, like it was fine. It was a bit more than just a three. But um, yeah, it's like, I'm not going to remember it. It's not memorable. It's not amazing. The cover is definitely the biggest wow factor in this book. Yeah, that's how it goes. There's, just, there's some also just like gross bits that are almost like incest, but not incest, but it feels incestual. If you know what I mean? Like, there's some stuff happening in the family line and I'm like, oh, and everyone's cool with this? Okay, cool. Ooh. All right. I guess I love to share in the family. But um, yeah, that was Starling. So I read that. Uh, the book that I'm currently reading is called A Dark History, and I believe it's a librarian's investigation of books that are bound in human skin. So it is looking at books that have human skin as their covers that have been found throughout history. So it's a bit of an oddity book, and I wanted to see it. Like, I wanted to know. 
what is inside these books bound in human flesh? Do tell me. And anything written by a librarian, I'm going to check out because, you know, those are my people. We're, we are of the same block. So that's what I'm currently reading. In terms of what am I going to pick up, that is fiction. I thought about just doing the tarot card shuffle, uh, which I might do. And I'll let you know what I've picked and what that is because, yeah, I'm just a bit like lost on, on what to choose next, to be honest with you. I've gotten my TBR down to about 40 books. Obviously, I added a lot, a lot. I did read a lot last week, but I added a lot as well. But it is at 40 um, which is better. I would like to ideally get it down to 20. I think that just feels a lot less stressy on me. It's something that I could whip out in a month. Yeah, I just, I'd rather not even have like TBR. I'd rather just have nothing and then just go on the hunt for a book on that day, you know, but that's not how life works. You know, I watch booktube and people talk about books that just sound phenomenal. So of course I'm going to add them to my TBR so I don't forget about them. And then it just climbs and climbs. So yeah, I'm hoping to get it down by doing a lot more reading. Uh, I'm at a point in my life where I'm not doing anything else really I'm dealing with some other like personal stuff so to cope with that I find comfort in reading so th I think this is the time this is my reading era I'm just going to be devouring books uh, to cope with the stresses of life so I'll I'll do a little tarot pull a grab a deck and pull a card and we shall see what I get Besides that, I'm going out today to a cafe. It's my date day. It's my errand running day, library and the post office and all that jazz, all that fun adult auditing, life auditing stuff. Uh, I've just filmed all of the <laughs> month wrap ups in one go. So it is exhausting. I have done it. They're all done. And now comes the task of editing them all and putting them up. So they will be delayed by you know um, a week. Well, in terms of my reading blog, my reading vlogs are delayed by about two weeks. So what you're seeing happened like two weeks ago. That's just the way it is. Um, so otherwise I would have my, you know, monthly wrap ups immediately done on the day, but then you're going to be hearing me just quickly rate books that you haven't heard me talk about. I don't want to spoil the vlogs, you know, so I do have to save that one, but my other channels, monthly wrap ups that just goes up, you know, in a timely manner. My kids had a book week today where they got to dress up as a character from one of their favorite books. So my youngest dressed up as Kirby. Uh, she loves Kirby. And my eldest dressed up as a character from the book Over My Dead Body by Sweeney Boo, which is a graphic novel about girls at a private school where there's murder and there's witches and she loves that stuff. I'll uh, touch base with you later on after I've done my library haul too, because I'm picking up some books and I'll let you know what I'm reading next. Okay, so I shuffled my tarot deck. I'm using the lovely ladies tarot today and I got the card temperance. So temperance is a prompt that says read a book with an even number of pages. So it's a pretty easy prompt. So for that one, I went through my TBR list and I have picked a book called bone Smith, which is quite a lot. I think it's 464 pages. So it's a big boy. Um, and it says Gideon the ninth meets game of Thrones, white walkers in a dark young adult fantasy. So, We'll see how that goes. That'll be my fiction choice next once I've finished reading the Dark Archives uh, nonfiction. Hello, hello. So I thought I would actually update you on Nova. So Nova had to have surgery the other day. Um, they believe that she has an autoimmune condition that attacks her gums. So they wanted to do some biopsies and they wanted to remove some of her teeth. Now, when she went under, they called me and they said that they think they should take out all her teeth. Uh, the price of that was astronomical in the thousands and thousands. And I said, look, let's take out some of them and see if it's enough and she's fine. If it's not enough and she's not okay, then we consider taking out all her teeth. I don't really want to go to that level yet. You know, she's only almost three years old, but they, yeah, they think that eventually she will have to have all of her teeth removed. But anyway, she's doing okay. Um, she took a little longer than expected to come out of the anesthetic, but so far so good. Someone's at my house, I don't know what for. 
So I went to the library, I picked up this book, Maltese Cooking, recipe book. <laughs> Got this one at my feet. Um, I picked up this one. This is called Bicycle and Broomsticks, Feminist Stories About Witches on Bikes. It caught, it caught my eye. <laughs> it sounds very interesting. Uh, and then I got this picture book for my daughter. It's called Sweep. And I got another picture book. Okay, editing Chanel here. I was editing the vlog I just finished and I realized I forgot to talk about the glass castle. So I'm just going to quickly add it into this week's one. The Glass Castle, I didn't rate it, but if I was, it would be a four star. It was a memoir of this woman's life. And when I tell you that it was absolutely insane, I mean insane in the membrane. The childhood this girl and her siblings had, horrific, full of abuse, full of trauma, how any of them made it out alive, first of all, and then actually managed to make lives for themselves and be successful and not succumb to what they had experienced is mind-boggling. It's very much a testimony to their grit and endurance and their, their will to survive, pretty much. Um, it was horrific, a million, zillion trigger warnings. The, her parents are literally the kind of people that put cats in bags and throw those bags into lakes. That should sum up very easily and quickly what kind of human beings these people were just oh my god it was it was like i said it was like a train wreck you couldn't avert your gaze from i just had to read it all and find out that she was okay that she made it through that her siblings made it through because i was absolutely appalled uh it was yeah it's the most jam-packed memoir that i have read <laughs> um but yeah i did i can't say i enjoyed it but you know it i was fascinated by her ordeal and her journey she's written it in a way that's very sort of non-judgmental she's kind of just reporting what her parents did without putting her personal opinion on what they have done it's like this happened and then this happened and i know some people didn't like the way that it was written but it helped keep me a little bit removed from it so that i wasn't so um just viscerally shocked and appalled the distance helped me to be like okay just move on to the next thing just move on to the next thing don't stay here but um yeah that was the glass castle Hello, so I thought I'd just give you guys an update on how I'm going. I have decided to DNF Dark Archives. The writing really isn't that great. The whole issue I have is that the majority of the books that are cased in flesh were made and owned by white male doctors. The skin was taken from their deceased victims, their deceased patients, whom were mostly women or people of colour none of their patients consented to having their flesh harvested after their death to be turned into books. And I don't know, the librarian was kind of skirting around that issue. I'm like, we need to address the elephant in the room. Uh, most of these books were generally the doctor's notes that they had wrapped up. There was some that were um, like 17th century BDSM poems or something of that vein. There was one that was a bit more interesting in terms of the content in the book. But otherwise, yeah, the elephant in the room of who were the humans that had take, had their skin taken without their consent and who was who were the people doing this wasn't really like addressed. So I decided to DNF it because even, yeah, on such an interesting topic, I guess, the writing was really dull and boring and the author was mostly just talking about, you know, how cool of a librarian she is and uh, where they work and what access they've had to certain things and I don't know it just wasn't it was making me feel uncomfy you know and the whole like I said the fact that the skin was taken from these patients without their consent is icky to me so I did neft it because there was no way I was going to be giving that more than a three-star rating and I'm um yeah so I stuck to my 50 pages and was like nah I'm out 
The next book that I'm going to read is Bonesmith, which I have on my e-reader. I also had some books come in that I ordered for my kids, because like I said, I do purchase books for my kids, just not for myself unless they're a five star. So I got this one for my eldest daughter because she saw this at the book fair, but she didn't grab it in time and there were no copies left. So this is a girl called Corpse. Don't know what it's about. I will be reading it because like I said, I do like to know what my children are reading um, in case there's something in there that I think I should talk to them about. So I got that for her. And for my youngest, I got the latest edition of the bad guys. These are the ones with glitter covers, sprayed edges, and full color images in the book. So this series, once again, it, we just love it. It's hilarious. The movie wasn't that good. I actually finally watched the movie. It wasn't funny. Whereas these books just make us giggle and laugh. So we will be collecting the whole set in this hard cover, glittery, full color copy. Um, so there's a, there's a lot to go, but this was just the latest one. So she's going to be stoked. That's here. And then I got this book. So I bought this sight unseen. It's called Sun and Moon Sisters. And it's got this holographic, I know you can't really see that on the, on the camera cover, but, um, I don't know the, the synopsis of it drew me in and I thought I would give it a go. So I don't know what this is about. I'll let you know if it's any good, obviously, when I, after I read it to my kid, but, um, yeah, I thought I'd. I purchased that. I needed to unlock free shipping. That's pretty much what it was. Uh, so yeah, those were the books that we have now added to our collection. And I'll touch base with you once I've read some more. That is hilarious. Hello, hey guys. So I will be reading a lot of books over the next few days. Why is that? I'm currently doing a three-day water fast so I'm doing it for medical reasons with my doctor's guidance and I'll be taking electrolytes while I do it. The reason that I'm doing it is because my Hashimoto's antibodies are extremely elevated and I'm very hypothyroid. I've just collected a new autoimmune condition because at this point it seems like I'm collecting them all which is rheumatoid arthritis. So at the moment one of my fingers and two of my toes have been affected I am hoping that the water first water fast does exactly what it does for my Hashimoto's in that it puts it in remission. So I'm hoping that because I've only had the physical symptoms of this condition for two weeks, that all of the damage might be reversed and I don't have any permanent disfigurement in my fingers. My mother has rheumatoid arthritis and hers progressed to the point that her hands and her feet were severely disfigured and she's having to have surgery and I don't want it to go that way. So. I'm upset that obviously this condition has been expressed, but I'm hopeful that I can, like I said, kick into remission and all the damage is done, is reversed and I'm no longer in pain and I no longer have another thing causing me mobility issues because I already, my card's full, my card's full with these things, you know, I don't want any more of them, I've got enough. But yeah, so that's happening at the moment. I've also got some psoriasis and water fasting also seems to clear that up for me. It's just. It's a horrible medicine, but it's a medicine all the same for me. And I know that in life, you generally say that the more you do something, the easier it gets. That is not the case with this. Um, I, I absolutely hate, I hate water fasting. It makes me extremely cold. My Reynolds phenomenon doesn't, doesn't like it. I am cold. I am hungry. I am very weak. I am fatigued. And I'm generally quite miserable and depressed. Like it negatively impacts my mental health. I know some people get the amazing like autophagy burst that doesn't that doesn't happen for me ever i never get that energy energy or mental clarity or well-being from any sort of autophagy or fasting i you know the fasting does like i said has in the past every single time reverse conditions and when i say reversed i mean reverse the symptoms of those conditions and put them into remission so i'm hoping it happens again but my god is it going to be struggle city here for me for the next three days i'm only 18 hours in and I'm constantly battling with my brain 
to not eat like just eat just forget it it's it's enough like don't worry about it do it another time do it another time but this is the best time because i'm also in my follicular phase and like i said i'm only two weeks into the rheumatoid arthritis so i'm hoping catching onto it quick will uh, get rid of it pretty much completely for now so yeah i'm just biting the bullet and doing it you know i have no plans this weekend i'm not seeing anybody like i said i'm in my follicular phase which is the best phase for me to do it uh, so I have already read some books. So I have read the Malta cookbook. It was okay. Um, I didn't love it. It did make me really hungry for Ftira. So Ftira is a Maltese kind of sandwich and it's my favorite Maltese food, but no one made it like my ex-husband's nonna made it. So every time I've had it, it's just not been the same. But um, I don't think I'll be making anything out of this cookbook. But it was nice to look at the photos, especially the travel photos. It's very reminiscent of, you know, when I had my honeymoon. I also read a graphic novel called Junk Wraith. So in this book, when people carelessly discard items, those items become wraiths that can then curse the person who discarded it. And those people who are cursed start forgetting everything. And the young girl throws away a pair of skates and then regrets it and tries to undo the curse. The illustrations were really pretty, very nice. I love the artwork. The story itself was so messy. It was so confusing. It was not structured well and very convoluted. So yeah, it's a three star. I think the next two books I'm going to pick up, I know I was reading Bonesmith, but I don't feel like that right now while I'm struggling <laughs> mentally with my choice to fast uh, so I'm going to pick up this bicycles and broomsticks because it's little and I got my daughter a graphic novel but I actually haven't read it so I'm going to read it just to make sure it's age appropriate because uh, I'm starting to think Meh, maybe it's not but I'll give it a go but the illustrations are really pretty in this but I'll show you later if I read it uh, I did this morning I had a, an astrological reading with Candace from beyond the veil tarot and astrology on YouTube because if you've been watching my channel you know that um, August was a full-on month for me where everything just seemed to go wrong and I had a lot of drama and trials and tribulations and I just was like Could someone tell me like what the hell's going on there's got to be some sort of cosmic design for this because this is too much this is too much nonsense in one go so I had a reading with her and uh, yeah it was it did its job it was very encouraging and it's given me some support and guidance in what I'm going to do with my life from this point forward and how to cope with certain things and you know how to plan and align certain things at certain times that might be most beneficial for me. It also shed a light on a lot of the relationship issues I've had with certain people and perhaps why it is so tricky and hard and um, should I persevere or should I let those relationships go but she did say like I'm sorry to tell you but because you have so many Scorpio <laughs> placements that um yeah you <laughs> you uh, will tend to in your life have a lot of the death and then rise from the ashes moments it's just what Scorpio is good at and because you've got so much of it this is what's been thrown your way and that you will be fine every time but unfortunately yeah you're going to have a lot of these moments over and over and over again so I'm like sweet it's like next next time next lifetime not no Scorpio places <laughs> just <laughs> let's not do it um but anyway so I'll touch base with you on and off. Maybe it depends on how more decrepit I look because I don't, I don't fare well. I'm not one of those people that looks pretty when they're struggling, you know, when they're sick, when they're run down, when they're tired. I, I don't glow. I, I barely glow at the best of times. So I might, I might spare you um, the frequent updates or I may not. I might be bored and need to do something. I don't know. Like I said, we'll just, I'm just going to see how I go right now. I'm going to read some books. I've got Good Omens to watch season two because I absolutely forgot about Good Omens uh, until Tarot Magpie um, said that they'd watched Good Omens too. They didn't like it. <laughs> they said they were very disappointed in it, but it reminded me like, oh yeah, I, I can continue watching that show. So I'm, I'm going to watch that and read and do all my chores today get everything done today that I can because I know that tomorrow and then the next day I am going to be completely wiped out I will be pretty much just lying on the couch all day long so while I still have some energy do everything I possibly can so I'll touch base with you guys once I've read some more books so I finished this graphic novel it's okay <laughs> the illustrations are very pretty but um, it's pretty basic the gist of it is 
She's a daughter of a magician, but it turns out magic's real and she's got some magic and there's a forbidden star-crossed lovers with her and the son of a Russian a mafia boss. And like I said, it's fine, but it's nothing of substance. You know, it's a bit of fluff, so not for me, but my kid's fine to read it. There's nothing inappropriate in there, but um, yeah, the illustrations are very pretty. Good morning, everybody. So, how have I been going? I am currently 37 hours into the fast. I always find day two so much better <laughs> than day one. Day one is very mind hungry, just constantly trying to talk yourself into eating and into stopping the fast. I also had a huge headache, so I didn't do any more video updates because it was pounding, pounding, pounding. But I have read Bonesmith, so I will show you some pictures of the edition I got in the mail yesterday. <laughs> Very fortuitous. Uh, I still read my library version rather than my fancy one because I don't like to wreck them. But Bonesmith is set in a world where the smiths have magical power, so Bonesmiths can control bones and iron smiths control iron and there's also ghost smiths. There's a lot of smithies. So you have the main character, Ren, and she's pretty much an outcast in her guild. Her father doesn't like her, and she fails at these trials uh, when she, she's sabotaged, though. But she still fails, and her grandmother exiles her to sort of the wall. If you've read Game of Thrones and you know what I'm talking about, she's sent to the perimeter and is meant to, you know, protect against any ghost attacks in the perimeter. So Bone Smiths are, are responsible for putting <laughs> the darling, pretty much laying ghosts to rest, stopping them from attacking people. Anyway, so she's there, the prince of the land, the third prince comes, he's very a typical roguish, rakish, unidentifiable sexuality, gender bending kind of prince. Uh, he's a goldsmith and they strike up a friendship and then he's kidnapped. So she tries to prevent the kidnap and in doing so, her and an ironsmith end up taking a tumble over a cliff and in this world bonesmiths and ironsmiths are enemies so they become unlikely allies in the quest to get the prince back he was kidnapping him for his own reasons and she's trying to save him but his people did turn on him in the kidnapping and tried to take him out try to execute the guy they decide to work together uh it's a very slow burn romance i don't expect much in this one it's very tame the spicy level is quite tame the book itself is very slow to begin with i really would have dnf'd it normally but because i have a special edition you know i have to read it all to know whether am i going to keep the book or am i going to re-gift the book so it took about 80 pages really it's pretty much until the prince is kidnapped and she ends up having to ally with the ironsmith that things actually start to get entertaining. The start of it is incredibly info dumpy with all of the facts about the world and everything else. It's just a bit like, oh, could you have done that in a better way? The world building and the magic system is interesting, but it's a bit confusing to understand even with all the info dumps. In this book, there are a lot of twists and betrayals and reveals that were kind of predictable to be honest with you. I kind of saw it coming especially in regards to her special snowflakeness. You know, she's not like other Bonesmith girls. And the true identity of the Ironsmith, it's just, yeah, it's a very standard fantasy book, I would say. I enjoyed it somewhat. You know, I gave it three and a half stars. It was enjoyable, but I have no desire to continue on with it. You know, there's nothing really making me want to find out what happens. <laughs> I will not be reading the second in the series. It is a duology, but it was fine. You know, it's a three and a half star read. Am I going to keep a three and a half star book on my shelf? No. So, um, so the next book I'm going to read is a Romance. 
I've decided I'm going to read one Stacey Reed romance every week because two of the ones that I've read have been five star, like glowing five star reads for me. The others have been in the three range, but generally I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to hate her books. <laughs> I'll just find them average. So I'm hoping there's got to be at least at least one more five star nugget in her massive backlist. So I uh, am yeah, once a week that's scratching my historical romance itch. So I'll be reading that book and I've decided to take myself out to get a massage and facial today to, you know, just help with the breakouts because I have been having like horrible skin lately as well. I'm like, oh, 37 and I'm having like a reoccurrence of acne. It's like good times. So I'm hoping that yeah, the fast helps with that too. But I thought let's go and do that because also it's going to occupy me for two hours or well, an hour and a half because time does tend to slow down when you're fasting. It, uh, it drags. It's real slow. <laughs> I actually took myself to bed because of the headache. I took myself to bed at 7.30 last night. I could not uh, stay awake or look at anything. It was a bit more than a headache. It was actually a migraine and it was in my eyes. And um, that's never pleasant, but thank God it did go by this morning. I did wake up in the middle of the night and it was still there and I'm like, no, <laughs> but it is gone. So I'm feeling much better in terms of the pain, the arthritis pain. It is less, but the swelling is still there. So we'll see. So that's also pretty much what's motivating me through it. I can't do these things unless there is a huge reason why I'm doing it. And having the arthritis was a very instant reminder. Like I could just look at my joints and then move them, feel the pain and be like, that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> that's why. So yeah, it was a good physical reminder to push through. The first day is always the hardest for me to push through and not give up and throw in the towel. You know, if I made it through the first day, it's likely that I will make it the whole three days. So, but I have to, like until the pain goes or I've hit the three day mark, I'm not stopping. But um, yeah, other than that, it's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day, which sucks. Cause yeah, I just don't, I won't have the energy to go for a walk. We'll just sit outside, I think on my back deck and, and soak up the rays, but I'll touch base with you uh, later on in the day when I've read some more books. Hi guys, how are you? Here's Bluebell, <laughs> baby. I love you. Um, I have read Bicycles and Broomsticks, something, I think it was called something like that. I'm giving it a three stars. It is really basic. They're just short stories about witches on, broom, on bicycles. <laughs> That's pretty much it. My favorite story was one that was about a midwife taking a bicycle to get to one of her clients who was giving birth and sort of using magic to protect the woman from her abusive husband who uh, mysteriously dies shortly thereafter. But the other ones, nothing really happens in them. <laughs> they were just chicks getting on bikes. So <laughs> I don't know. It was, you know, uh, yeah, not much to it. So I didn't love it, obviously. I did finish Stacey Reed's book, Accidentally Compromising the Duke. I have given this three stars. This is my least favorite Stacey Reed so far. And that's because it includes tropes I don't like. So this one includes a pregnancy trope and a widower. With widowers, they have to have not really liked their previous wife. That would have had to have been a marriage of convenience or money, it had to have been a loveless marriage. I don't like reading about widowers who were absolutely devoted to their wives, love them beyond anything and don't really want to ever get married again because their heart is broken. And that was the case in this one. He hadn't touched her room. I didn't like it. I didn't really like much about it, to be honest. So yeah, the, I think going forward with Stacey Reed's backlist, any ones that include widowers with children, no, no. Uh, or getting people pregnant to have babies, no. So that was a downer, but I've got some book mail. So this came in the post, The Little Frog's Guide to Self-Care by Mabel Ekwe. Um, I got this because I thought it would be cute as our little Christmas um, 
thing at the end of the year we do a bad santa thing where we all put gifts in and we all take turns stealing ones we like from each other so i'm going to do a little tea chocolate and book situation and i just thought this was really cute and adorable so i'm gonna have a read through it before i put it away um but i'll let you know if it's what it's like and i also got uh this is i think a luma crate so we have zara so it's got sprayed edges like that this is the back and this is the alternative cover which is a very different vibe compared to the other cover it's also got end papers which are just patterned patterned end papers so i'm reading this next because i just got it in i love that it's a little little book like it's quite short and i think that's really cute um i just like little things i like little things so yeah it looks pretty um it's a ya story so we'll see how it goes but i'll be reading that since i've got this edition i did cancel my luma crate i don't know if i'll get the last one or if cancelling it means i don't get the last one but i've cancelled that because i, I didn't like any of the books <laughs> uh, we'll see what this one's like but the previous ones not a single one of them am i keeping uh the fairy loot bone smith obviously that was decent three and a half stars not enough for me to keep the book though i'm not keeping a three and a half star book on my shelf so I'm giving Fairy Loot one more and then I'm going to probably cancel that subscription as well because they do sell their editions on their website now. So, you know, the fear of missing out on a special edition is lessened. So I am going to stop it. But um, yeah, so I'll be reading Zara next and I'll let you know how it goes. I'm about to make a lemon meringue pie for my daughter because it's her 12th birthday today and lemon meringue pie is one hello sylvie so i'm going to make her a lemon meringue pie with a graham cracker crust i will be stopping my fast in about five hours when everyone comes over to celebrate my daughter's birthday uh, i'm okay <laughs> i'm very tired and very hungry and my headache came back so uh, i'm freezing cold as well even though it's warm today <laughs> i'm like rugged up with the um, rheumatoid arthritis the pain has lessened I'd say by 75% the swelling also has lessened but it is still they're, f they're fighting the swelling is still slightly there so it's probably reduced 50% in swelling but it is still swollen so it wasn't a hundred percent reversal like I was hoping for but um, I know my Hashimoto's will be in remission after this because it always every time I've done it it's just gone into remission straight in uh, and the psoriasis is all gone that i had so that's great there have been benefits and um, i'm quite pleased this isn't 100 percent, but i don't know maybe it might go away over the next few days maybe it just needs a bit more time for the swelling to reduce down so we'll see we'll see but i plan to obviously eat better <laughs> from now on as i was planning to anyway um just have only you know one or two days a week where i indulge in the more sugary white kind of foods you know <laughs> the less nutritionally dense foods not every day even though i love indulging every day i'm a bit of a hedonist when it comes to food but you know unfortunately my body's didn't get the memo <laughs> and it reacts poorly so but yeah otherwise i'm just so excited to be done with this fast let me tell you <laughs> so i'll cut, touch base with you um later on Hello, so let me tell you what else I've read this week. So, Bluebell, no, oh my God. I just caught this one trying to climb to the top of my closet. Okay, so I have also read, hey Sylvie. Hey, my beautiful Sylvie. I have read Zara, the book that I got from Luma Crate. Um, yeah, uh, I decided to do an effort. Look, it wasn't the best book to read while fasting. The opening of the story is literally the main character making custard buns. <laughs> I was dying <laughs> when I was reading the descriptions. And then she goes to a food market and is talking about all the food she's seeing. And I'm like, oh, this is killing me. But that is not why I did Afton. I'm not so petty as that. The writing was real weird. Ah, uh, I did not like the writing style. And the humor in it was not funny. It was actually off-putting. She 
found a handsome guy and was referring to it as the good looking giggles. I don't know, it was just off. The whole book was off. And I think in his book, she's got powers and I think you're not supposed to have powers. People are killed for having powers, but she uses her magic anyway. And she's got a bit of a stepmother situation going on and they kind of live in poverty and she's trying to help get some money to help find suitors for her sisters. And then she meets this guy and he's got a forbidden book and she starts talking to him about pornography. Yeah, it was real weird. And then I decided to read some people's reviews on Goodreads and um, they were mentioning the same things that I was finding not cool or not great. So I thought I'm just going to DNF it. Yeah, it was just very young as well for me. So not my jam. And then I read Foxglove. So this is the second in the Belladonna series and I actually really liked Belladonna. This one, oh, the start is rough. Like, I was even thinking of DNFing it, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna push through because I did like the first one. I'm glad I pushed through. It ended up being a 3.75 for me. And that's because of Blythe, whom I didn't really like, to be honest, but she comes in and saves the day because Signa in this is so useless. <laughs> like, she's just, she doesn't really do anything. And her and Death and their romance, their forbidden romance in the first one was like life-giving for me. And in this one, it wasn't the same. He was barely in it, which was upsetting. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by a wagtail. And uh, this one was more about fate. And it started looking like there was going to be a love triangle and a trope of uh, reincarnated dead wives and I was really not liking that. I thought if they go down this path, I'm going to hate this book. And they did end up diverting into a different one, which was much better. So I'm happy at the ending. It pretty much was all at the end that just things got good. And like I said, Blythe is who brought it. You know, uh, I was here for her energy. Uh, otherwise, overall the storyline with the Blythe's dad being framed for murder, I just couldn't care less. Less cares could not be given. Uh, it was really dull and boring. So look, 3.75, it's still decent. I still enjoyed it. I think it's mostly to do with because I liked the first one and I persevered. Uh, if this was like the first book in a series, I wouldn't like it that much at all. But yeah, it was just a bit, I don't know. It, it, didn't, it didn't feel the same as the first book. It felt very different and not in a good way. But if the third book in the series has the magic of Signa and Death from book one, I will read it. If it's mostly just Blythe and the person who I'm assuming is going to be her love interest, I don't care enough to read it. Like I don't like those two characters enough to continue with the series. So we shall wait and see what Wisteria is about. But so far I am on the fence on whether I'm going to continue the series. And then I read Morgan is my name. So I originally read one chapter of this in my choosing books based on their first chapters and it lost out to Witch in Time. But I gave this four and a half stars. Uh, I really enjoyed this. And look, I'm not really one for Arthurian legends. I've never really cared about Camelot and Arthur and Merlin and Morgan Le Fay. It just for whatever reason doesn't really interest me that much. But I loved this. Uh, so it does take a bit to get into it. I will say that. Like, it's not slow though. I wouldn't call it a slow start because stuff happens. There's deaths galore and uh, shitty kings who you can't stand and Morgan, I adore Morgan. So I know it's supposed to be like a villain story because Morgan is generally painted as a villain in Arthurian legend, but she, she a bad bitch. We're rooting for Morgan. I'm on team Morgan, okay? That's, or Morgan, I think is how she prefers to pronounce it. Morgan, I think. I love her, love her. So she, despite her circumstances, does the best to sort of retain as much autonomy as she can. She has a voracious thirst for knowledge and Bluebell, apologies, she just keeps trying to climb to the top of my cupboards and she'll hurt herself. So we see her from when she was a child to her as an adult married to a king that she doesn't really want to be married to. So much stuff happens. It's a lot of stuff and I loved it. I actually loved the romance that was in there. It's not with the king she marries. And I wish there was more of it because I really liked it. So the book does just sort of end abruptly, I guess, sort of in the beginning of her adult years after she's had her child and I was like don't end there keep going please surely she reunites with her lost love and she comes into her power and she does cool shit and she comes into her magic so it did just 
stop. I don't know if it's going to have a sequel. I have to look it up because surely they're not going to finish right before she really becomes like a sorceress and does cool stuff. <laughs> like, surely. But she does have magical powers in this. So uh, Merlin is painted as an absolute douche canoe in this book. Nobody likes Merlin if you read this book. So he's definitely not the cool guy in this story. This is Morgan, Morgan's story. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a four and a half star book for me. So I liked it. I found myself getting so frustrated though by all of the crappy men surrounding her, imposing their will on her and all that sort of stuff. And um, just, yeah. But uh, And I love the female friendships in this. And there was queer rep in it as well. Some ladies love and ladies. Morgan is my name solid so recommend but and I'm, and I'm happy to have finished my week off on a high so that is fantastic i have been lately having at least i think one four star book a, a week and I, i'm very thankful for it i just love when i finally get like you know books that i like sometimes i just keep down and i'm like maybe i just don't like books anymore. <laughs> like i've read so many that they all just feel same same but then I get ones and I'm like, oh, this is a good story. Oh, I love these characters. Oh, this is written so well. And I'm like, nah, there are things you like. You just have to find them, I guess. And I finished my fast yesterday, hallelujah. Oh, so good to be able to eat again. I did break it with lemon meringue pie and tofu and fried rice, which I do not recommend <laughs> doing that. But it was my daughter's birthday. She turned 12. We just had a little impromptu like cake and get together with some family members. Um, her party's going to be coming up, but it was so good to be able to eat again. It was a struggle, but oh, I don't have any pain in my joints or my toes, but I still do have a bit of swelling on this finger, but I, it's not as bad as it was. The, like I said, psoriasis and, and the hashis is all, is all good now. So I do feel marvelous. I feel fantastic. We'll see how this goes. Maybe hopefully it'll continue to improve with some modifications to my diet, just eating more anti-inflammatory foods. Um, otherwise I might try again in the future if it starts to progress again if it stays as it is or gets better fantastic if it starts to get worse again I might try this one more time see if it can work for it but I know that water fast isn't a cure-all for everything it might work for some autoimmune conditions and not for others but like I said there has been improvement and that's what I was hoping for so I do feel much better I feel fantastic <laughs> so, yay um, but otherwise, that is everything for this week. I hope that wherever you are, you're having an excitingly good morning, afternoon or evening. And as always, stay wild, star child.